Hi, hello, my name is Beth, and this is Red Portraits, a show where I pick someone out of pop culture who I think is fabulous. Tell you why I think they're fabulous. And then I draw them, and I try a different style every single time. Kind of, not always, but kind of. You've been suggesting her for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks, and I'm finally getting around to it, guys. Thank you for your suggestions. Today, we're drawing Miss RuPaul. You like how she looks? Well, stick around and I'll show you how I did it. Start your engines. Is that the right hand signal? Probably not. RuPaul is an American actor, drag queen, model, author, and musician. And heads up gang, I'm gonna be flipping back and forth between he and she pronouns because that's the kind of world Ru has created for us all to live in, and I'm living in it. Born RuPaul Andre Charles in San Diego, California in 1960, Ru was named by his Creole mother in homage to the similarly named combination of butter, flour, and milk that kicks off a gumbo recipe. Growing up, he never had the chance to come out of the closet because everyone pegged him for being gay the moment he could walk, and young Ru embraced it, and in his words, became the prettiest of all the girls. Ru remembers his childhood home being tumultuous. In his words, it was a house full of crazy hillbilly people. He moved out at 15 and stumbled through his late teens. He drank profusely, smoked alarming amounts of weed, and at 21, after enrolling in a performing arts school in Atlanta, Georgia, he decided it was time to become famous and dropped out. Rue struggled for years to make it as a performer and musician. And when I say years, I mean it took three decades before he caught a break. He hustled in underground cinema, emceed local events in drag, performed in a punk rock band called Wee Wee Pole, worked as a bar dancer, moved to New York, couch surfed and worked coat checks, moved to Los Angeles, couch surfed and worked coat checks. When he was 28, Rue was careerless and a habitual drug user. He contemplated suicide, but on TV, Oprah was telling him to persevere so he did. In 1989, Rue returned to New York, and drag realness, which is true lady impersonating, was the it thing. So Rue pushed his balls up into his pelvic cavity, shaved his entire body, and embraced the movement in the biggest way. Drag, he says, was a great social commentary, and people responded to him in drag in ways that he never experienced before. He started getting traction then cleaned up his act after his drug use got him fired from a music video shoot, and in 1992, at 32 years old, Rue released a single called Supermodel, You Better Work, and it became a worldwide hit song. Rather than becoming a one-hit wonder, though, Rue capitalized on his popularity and became the first drag queen supermodel with MAC Cosmetics, landed his own talk show on VH1, The Rue Paul Show, and continued to release popular dance and club music. Now, while researching for this video, I had a moment where I had to check my privilege. Rue's visibility in the public eye directly correlates with the changing political climate, which is an experience that I've never had. While Clinton was in office, the country was ready for its first supermodel drag queen and she flourished. After 9-11, the hostile fear that took over the country drove her away from the limelight and she disappeared. Anything to do with gender or sexuality went underground for fear of being labeled the other and attacked. Decades pass, and even with all of our progress, the LGBTQ plus community continues to be slammed by seemingly every side. Even YouTube's abhorrent restricted mode fiasco is sending a message to all of us that the LGBTQ plus community is inherently sexual or perverse and should be hidden behind a curtain that labels it as such. So this is why RuPaul's Drag Race is one of the most f***ing important shows on television right now. I'll admit it, I'm new to the drag world. I knew pretty much nothing about it up until a year ago, and shame on me because it's right up my alley. Ultimately, drag is a sort of piss take on culture because a drag queen is a clown. It is a parody of our society. It is a sarcastic spoof on culture which allows us to laugh at ourselves, but in a way that is inclusive of everyone. Drag, at its core, is about reminding the culture not to take itself too seriously. To delve deeper into this, I'm gonna pull a paragraph directly from a Rolling Stone interview with Rue where she says, All things to do with drag are inherently therapeutic because the realization of your own insanity is the beginning of sanity. You have to go into this complete artifice to figure out who you really are. Now this does not apply to Tyler Perry or Jack Benny style drag. There's a certain genre of drag that is sanctioned and it's okay because they are saying to the audience, oh, and by the way, I'm making fun of this. But then there's the drag that I do and that my girls do, which is really taking the piss out of all identity. And that's what's important here. When you take the piss out of identity, you equalize everyone who's standing on the playing field. I felt that when I went to DragCon last year. Men were women, and women were men, and men were men, and women were women, and it was all rad. It was all okay. And frankly, I've never been so comfortable in my own skin in my entire life. 
Rue won an Emmy for Drag Race and is recognized as the world's most famous drag queen. He's been sober since 1990 and married his partner of 23 years in January of this year. Oh, and did I mention RuPaul is 56 years old? I I repeat, RuPaul is 56 years old. Look at her, what the f***? Like this video, subscribe to Snarled if you haven't already. If you like me, I have a channel called Beth Be Rad where I talk at a camera. I also have a gaming channel called Fresh Plays. Go check them out, links in the description below. Leave me a comment telling me who you want me to draw on the next Red Portraits. And in the meantime, my shoulder hurts. I don't know why.